All right, man. Welcome, gang, to our weekly national sales webinar to handle questions and to give you answers and suggestions on how to help you take care of your clients and close. Um, this is going to be one of those uh, webinars where I have an agenda that I want to accomplish today. Um, but at the beginning, you know, I like to field any questions y'all might have and then I'll jump into the new ATM that I just crafted. Um, kind of with the way things are at the Alliance right now with them integrating um, integrity marketing into their infrastructure um, and so on. And, and then uh, Robbie Kraft taking over the arc. There really isn't anyone that's like the sales manager who handles all the sales stuff. So I took it upon myself to revise the ATM. Uh, I mean, I had I had a strong hand in in creating it with um, several other managers, uh, but since with since COVID nineteen and the way things have changed, I took it upon myself to make changes and update it because it's it just needs updating and um, and modeling a lot of things that other people are doing that are just killing it and selling. Uh, like a brand Swindell and other people um, that incorporated those things inside the ATM to make it more um, foolproof. Where there's a, not a lot of teaching you all the things that's not written on the page, but really helping you with writing stuff on the page on the ATM so that you can kind of follow it along and then you can, you know, spice it up according to your personality and style and so on. So, um, so that really is what I did. And I took a long time to put it together. And then all this will flow into our sales scripts for the telesale. So the other thing that I really wanted to do with this is make it compatible with selling over the phone. So it's not a big leap. Right now there's a big leap between what we're doing on the phone and what we're doing in the home with regard to the ATM. So I wanted to kind of meld it together so you really can incorporate the, this ATM PowerPoint, even if you're doing it over the phone. Um, plus it's, it's uh, Zoom friendly, it's internet presentation friendly. And I'm kind of leaning towards maybe new people trying to get a web presentation as opposed to just purely on the phone, because I think purely on the phone, um, you, you lose the ability to, for the client to see you and you to see the client. And again, it's only, you know, maybe there'll only be a percentage of your clients that will be able to get on a Zoom or get on the other uh, method, which is whereby.com. What's nice about whereby.com is you, they don't have to download anything. They just go to a website. And then the website, you give them a code and then boom, they're on your desktop. So there's nothing to download. So sometimes that might be an easier way for maybe a senior to get on. Um, sometimes seniors are already clued into Zoom because their grandkids and stuff have taught them how to get on a Zoom call. So, so Zoom is you know, kind of the standard right now. Um, so maybe we recommend our new people to try to lean towards doing more Zoom calls. They got to you know, they'll, they'll have a larger margin for error because it's not totally based purely on the phone. Um, maybe create a little bit more bond and rapport with the client because the client can see you. They can check out your credentials visually. I mean, there's a lot of things. So <clears throat> it might increase our closing rates for the new people that are just trying telesales out for the first time. So that's another reason why I wanted to, you know, get this presentation um, done. So. All right, well, let's go ahead and jump in. I've got 12 after. Um, and um, okay, the new ATM, again, all based on Sandler seven step sales submarine. And this book here is the best book on following the process. And I've been teaching this process to my team for 20 years, 21 years. And if you look at Levin Tovich and all those top people, they use, we've taught this forever, that they just incorporate in all the things that you do. Um, but it's all based on 
the center cell system. In fact, Brent Swindell, if you go through his thing, he does all those elements. It's really cool, but he does them all. So really, it's a great way to um, duplicate what top people are doing. And this book really rocks. And I'll talk about this a little bit more. But let, let's cover kind of an overview of the system of the sales submarine. And then we're going to go over how the ATM now, the new 7.0 version, <laughs> it's just so funny, man. <laughs> okay, so it's a submarine, okay? It is a, we call the submarine because it's a process-oriented system. It's not one of those, you know, um, Hoover vacuum cleaner, a cut, cut co cutlery, memorized three hour presentations, okay? It is a process. And if you understand the process, then the words that, that come out of you to accomplish the process will be your words, will be natural, be just laid back, just be, you know, real, real, you know, um, like natural, like you're having a conversation with someone. And it's all based on asking questions, okay? So, <laughs> this is a professional operation, man. We got markers at work, <laughs> speaking it into existence. That was kind of like a German U boat almost. <laughs> okay, we got to have the periscope. So, it is a process, and the process starts with bond and rapport. Okay, then it goes into upfront contract. And I'm using all the Sandler words, man. I give Sandler all the credit. In fact, the CEO of Sandler Sales System called me up one day and said, man, I've been watching your videos. And he says, what I like about you is that you don't call it something else, you call it what it is. And I told him, dude, you know how many books I've sold you? <laughs> and he goes, well, it's intellectual property and I'll, I'll check with our lawyers, but like if you're using everything and you're giving us proper credit, well then man, keep rocking, dude. Well, he didn't say that, that's my words. <laughs> he said, keep going. It was like, it was such a compliment, you know, because I'm a President's Club member. I paid 10 grand years ago, you know, 24, 25 years ago. So I'm a lifetime member of Sandler. And then, man, I'm selling their books because all that stuff works, especially for this. So you got the upfront contract, okay. Then you got the pain finding, all right, okay. Then you, from pain finding, um, we establish budget, okay. We lock down the decision process, okay. Then we do the fulfillment of the contract, which is you commit to this and I'll commit to showing you options. So this is where we show the pricing, we lock down the e-app, get the signature done, and then we go into post-sell. The post-sale process, which locks down and is the key to placement of persistency. So it's seven steps, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven steps, all right? And the reason why we use the submarine analogy is that it's designed for you to establish each step in the process, each compartment. And why do we use a submarine analogy? Because when a submarine gets, let's say, hit in this section, the fulfillment section, this compartment floods, but you can tie it off here and here. You know, you can spin the hatch and it's watertight so that this fills up but it doesn't flood the rest of the submarine and it's, you survive, right? And so we use the same analogy in the system. We call this the ATM submarine system, okay? That's our only little addition to this. The Alliance Training Manual. So you, you can't move on until you establish bond and, for, bond and rapport with the client. Right, and the bond and rapport, the purpose of bond and rapport is to create trust so that the client believes you. So trust and believe, so bond and rapport, okay? 
when you get enough good juju with the client where they trust you, there's, you sent your digital business card, they see a picture of your family, you get to know them, find out about their family and understand them, then you do the upfront contract, which, by the way, Bonapur actually goes through all the six other steps. You keep going with Bonapur, but you got to establish it first. Once you get that good juju going, then you do the upfront contract, which is a qualification. Okay, so in order to protect you and give you the protection you're looking for, you know, it sounds like this, but I'm going to go over the, over the ATM. In order to get the protection you look for, I'm going to have to ask you a few questions, basically. You know, are you good with that? So right away, it's like, well, no, I'm not good with that. I, I don't want to do this. Oh, okay, great. Well, you don't have to. I mean, it's okay to say no. And this is where you give them the, you empower them to say no. That's the most important thing about the upfront contract is they know they can say no, that they're in control. But when you ask them questions and you take control over, okay, and that's the beautiful thing about the Sandler system is it, it makes you not sound like every other salesperson out there. Because the problem with every other salesperson out there is they use the Tom Hopkins, the, the Ben Franklin clothes, or the Tom Hopkins clothes, or this clothes. And clients are smart enough to recognize, oh, so you're making me do a tea, a tea table? Where I got put, you're going to have me put all the advantages and disadvantages, aren't you? You're going to, that's the Ben Franklin clothes. You're going to use the Ben Franklin clothes on me, aren't you? You know, they, these clients aren't stupid, man. And so the beauty of the Sandler system, it, it makes you an anti-salesperson. Like, you don't become a salesperson because you're, asking, you're doing things that they don't do. And see, here's your problem. The problem is, if you don't follow the ATM submarine system, then the alternative is the client sales system, right? What's the client sales system? They're going to make you feel like you belong there. They're going to make you feel like family. They're going to have you sit down, get your water, you know, be so nice to you. Then they're going to tell you that they really need it. Yeah, we really need this, Alex, man. We just, and in your mind, you're thinking, oh, done deal, done deal. This is done. <laughs> when in fact, they're just sucking up to you, man. And they're going to say, well, why don't we go ahead and, you know, we really want this. So what's it going to cost us? So you immediately jump to showing them your prices, right? Because you think it's done. And then once they see your prices, they go, you know, that's great. In fact, Alex, you are one of the best salespeople we've ever seen in our lives. In fact, we're going to, can you give us business cards like this face to face? Because we're going to pass it pass out to all our congregation members at church. We love you. You're great. You're one of the best. But, you know, me and my wife, we're going to think about it. We we're praying. And the Lord told us that we got to think about it. <laughs> you're thinking, oh my gosh, how do I combat the Lord? Well, why don't you tell them this? this? I've done this. I've used this. And I've turned people around with, they go, gosh, you know, Joe and Mary, that's really interesting. I was praying before I came over here and the Lord said, take care of this couple, Alex, because they need to protect their family. So I don't know. That's what I was told. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Try that one, man. That one works. Trust me, that one works. Anyway, they tell you, well, we want to think about it. And you're like going, what happened? I thought you really wanted it. You're like in your mind going, oh my gosh. Right? That's the client sales system. So if you don't use yours, if you don't use ours, then you default to the client's think about it system. And that's why your closing rate sucks. Right? If you are brand new with us, you should get using the system a 55% close rate on your presentations. And then once you start getting good at this, which means how do you get good at it? Learning how to ask questions and the right questions and using the proper, we call reverses. You know, you start mastering the negative reverse, you, man, your closing rates are gonna shoot up to 70, 75% lickety split, okay? But, but if you're just starting with us, man, you should get 55%, okay? So going through this process, so Bonner Report, the idea is to create trust so they believe you, right? How do you believe in someone you don't trust, okay? And then once you're done with the upfront contract, qualifying that they're gonna continue on with you, then we are able to move on to pain finding, finding their emotional pain, right? People with, people 
that talk about this process logically don't end up buying anything because they're just logically minded. Okay, we want to get them into the emotion. Okay, what's beautiful about this book, right? This book, Asking Questions, The Sandler Way, Antonio Garrido, as he goes into, and you've heard Levantovich talk about this. This is what I taught Levantovich. You got to be the parent in the room, parent, adult, child. This is the transactional analysis that goes on. This is you. I know I'm stuffing about three hours of teaching in less than an hour. This is the client, okay? You got to be in the parent state and you got to get the client in the child state. The child state is an emotional state, okay? Right, the parent in the room is the one that gives guidance and nurtures their children. The adult state is logical, logical, okay? When you start asking questions and you start doing the upfront contract, upfront contract, your parent, pain finding your parent, you're trying to get the, 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 the client in the child mode, which is an emotional mode. You wanna get them reacting to the questions you're asking about how difficult it'll be to pay the mortgage, Mary. How difficult would it be to pay the mortgage when you lose Joe's income when he dies? And you say, not if he dies, not when he passes away, Passes away is wimpy. You got to say when he dies, you're gonna lose. You're gonna lose his ninety-five thousand a year income, aren't you? Yeah. Question. So tell me, when is the mortgage due? Question. First of the month. Oh wow. So I'm sure you're gonna be able to probably cover the mortgage with your savings, right? For what six months a year? That's a that's actually a negative reverse. Uh, no. How many months? I don't know. Three to six months? How much is your mortgage? So you see, all of a sudden it like becomes real to them. And all of a sudden you start driving them to be emotional about what the problem is. More importantly, Joe gets to hear how his wife and children are gonna struggle. You know, on the funnel expense, it's like, so, so Joe, tell me um, you need this protection. What drove you to fill out this form? What drove you to answer the, you know, to fill out that Facebook request? Well, we just wanted to see how much it cost. Again, logical, right? They're in adult mode. You got to keep asking questions. Okay, well, great. I appreciate that. We, we definitely have a lot of different choices for you there, but let's get back to brass tacks. When you die, um, how's your family going to cover your funeral expenses? Do you plan to get cremated or buried? Are they gonna to have to do a GoFundMe page? Are they gonna to have to sell the house and be able to you know, get the money later? Is someone gonna to have to put on a credit card? Now, every time you ask a question, you're not drilling them with questions, you're waiting for their answer. And you just pause and you wait for them to answer the question. Silence is the best closing technique, is when you shut up after you create a question and then you let them answer the question. Don't let them off the hook. Then you drive them to this emotional thing. So you, this is where closing happens when you're the parent in the room and they're in child mode, then you nurture it. And then when you move them down the submarine, they purchase here and they justify it here. And this is where placement and persistency happens, right? Because it's logically good for them and they've got the emotional backing behind the decision. This book goes into PAC, man, parent, adult, child. Anyway, I just wanted you to know where it comes from, where Levin Tovich talks about, you gotta be a parent in the room. That's where it comes from, baby. So you find their emotional pain. So this is, you establish the need. You find out that they need it, okay? Now you talk about budget, and you're establishing that there is a budget for it, and that you're making them feel comfortable that we are gonna fit it in their budget, no matter what. We're gonna find some solution that will fit because if it doesn't fit, it doesn't make sense. And we need to know that from you, Joe and Mary, that if it doesn't make sense, doesn't fit your budget, let me know. Because sometimes clients will just sit there and not say anything. In their mind, they're thinking, oh God, there's no way we can afford this. We can't move forward with the decision. And that's in their head because you didn't tell them that there are other options. We can't, 
you know, if the first thing we throw out there doesn't work, right? By empowering them to tell us that there's a problem gives them control, right? And gives you another place to go with them and it doesn't get shut down. Because you ever like show rates and then all of a sudden they shut down? Well, the reason why they do that is because they think, oh my gosh, we can't afford this. Let's just stop this process, right? Because that's another emotional response. They're in child mode. That's another child emotional response. You got to appeal to the adult in them saying that there are other options. So they really think, oh, well, there are other options. You know, this isn't the last word. So the budget helps them understand that. The decision is you would get rid of the think about it where you tell them, okay, this is what happens next. And you tell them that all we're gonna do is find, I'm gonna ask you some questions about health and we're gonna find a program, the right program for you. I'm gonna lay out three options. You're gonna pick one and then we're going to apply for it. Okay, and when we apply for it, it'll go to the insurance company and they're gonna think about you. They're gonna determine whether or not you get this coverage, right? So honestly, Joe and Mary, tonight, this today, whatever the appointment is, is not a think about it day to day or night to night. There's no thinking about it, Joe and Mary, because there's nothing to think about because we don't even know if you qualify, okay? We just let the insurance company let us know that. So all we're gonna do today is just decide what is comfortable in your budget and then we're gonna see if you qualify for it. So there's nothing to think about. The time to think about it is once we know you're approved, it comes back to you, your policy would get mailed to you, you know, within seven to 10 days after they approve it, which could take a week. And then once you have it, you can review it and I will call you and I'll review it with you to make sure it's got everything that you're looking for. At that point, you can think about it and you can think about raising the, the coverage, decreasing the coverage, you know, you're gonna have all this time to figure that out. So is that reasonable to you? Does that sound good? Does that work for you? Boom, you got rid of think about it because you told them they can't think about it. So you can't blame a client for doing something you told them they couldn't do, right? You just told them they can't think about it and that's how you get rid of the think about it stall. Know what I'm saying? So once you get a commitment that they understand that we're gonna fit in their budget and the decision process, where you nail down the decision process, this is how you know they want it, right? So what you've done in this submarine process, if you created trust and belief, they'll believe you, they trust you. You find out through the RFON contract campaign that they actually really need it, right? And then the budget and decision process will establish that they want it, okay? And guess what? Now we do the rates, we tell them what they need for their application, because this is important. We gotta know if we gotta do a, um, a Transamerica because they have the Social Security Direct Express card, right? There's limitations with, depending on, like if they have, don't have an email address, then we gotta go with the voice signature process. And if their health isn't good enough for CFG, which is voice signature, then we gotta to go to Great Western or AIG, which is, you know, doesn't require an email, right? But the fulfillments, we show them the prices, they pick a price and then we apply for it, either electronic application or if you're with the client face-to-face, -face, a paper app or an e-app face-to-face. This is where you nail down, can they afford it, okay? So these are the five elements of a righteous sale. Trust, believe, need it, want it, and afford it. And if you ever go back to all the sales situations where you didn't close, and I'm talking the 75% that you should close, because clearly 25% do not deserve your time. They don't deserve your time as a, a servant to, to help them as a salesperson. They don't deserve to be clients, okay? I'm talking about the 75%, like I said, 55 to 75%. So some of y'all are missing the 20% that deserve to be clients. And the reason why is you didn't do this well enough to get trust, believe they need it, they want it, and they afford it. That should have been here, right? Now the 25%, they probably, they may need it, but they don't want it. Okay, I mean, how many people have all the insurance they need? 
Sometimes you get the people that are fully covered and it's like nothing you can do to help them because they've got plenty of insurance. So you're gonna have people here, you're gonna get a lot more people here, they just don't want it, they don't like you, which is here, they don't like you, they think you're trying to scam them, there's no trust, okay? Anyway, and then the post sale, really if you wanna do a fifth one, this has to do with placement persistency, they're gonna keep it. <laughs> They're gonna keep it. So the post sale is all about them keeping the policy for the long haul so you can get the renewals. So do you see how simple the process is? Now, each one of these compartments, we're not talking about you know, 30 minutes here, another 30 minutes here, another hour here, another two hours in these two. And now, man, we're talking about, this is probably one of the most, maybe this is five to 10 minutes. This is probably 30 seconds, pain, you're going to spend, you should spend time here. This could be five to 10 minutes. You know, budget is a minute. Decision is a minute. Fulfillment, because this is where it takes all the time because you know with the electronic applications, the fulfillment side, that could take 45 minutes, man, 30, 45 minutes, long time to just deal with the electronic application, right? Then post sales, another couple minutes. So you're looking at a very efficient process if you do it properly, okay? Now, um, I was going to say, so when you're calling a client out from the book, the appointment, they say, well, how long is it going to take? Oh, it takes about 15, 20 minutes, okay? When you're saying it takes 15, 20 minutes, this is where you, your presentation takes about 15 to 20. Everything else takes longer, okay? So it could be another hour. This could be another hour here, okay? It could be an hour and a half but 15, 20 minutes, you're not lying. You know, they're the ones that decide that it goes longer because now we got to do the e-app, right? So you're, again, you're not fibbing, you're just telling them what it's gonna take, okay? So this is the process, as I like to say in Canada, right? The seven step ATM sales submarine, bond rapport, upfront contract, pain finding, establishing the budget, by the way, you can even ask, so tell me just ballpark numbers, okay? That's how you, that's the technique to use in asking a question, just ballpark numbers, round numbers, you know, what were you playing on a budget for this? Okay, now if you did the paint finding really well, they might have thought 50 bucks a month, but if you found the emotional pain, man, this goes, that doubles. There'll be 100 bucks, you know, or 200 bucks if you did the pain properly as long as they have pain. And if you did this properly, pull it out, this budget goes up. This gives you an idea, okay? Depends on how good you are. If you're really good, then you can ask the budget. If you're not that good, I may not want to ask that question, which is why I didn't put it in the ATM. You know, that's more of a subtle, you know, sales 404. Um, budget, decision, process, get rid of, think about it, show them rates, get the e-app done, get the signature done, Lord God, please help us get the signature done. And then the post sale to lock it down. And then, you know, if you're doing the telesale, you, you kind of do a lot of this in the next appointment, the second appointment. Um, I, I'll, I'll address some of that. So this is the process. Whew, that, was, that was a mouthful, man. I tried to get through that quick, okay? But let's go through the ATAM so I can show you. And again, this is something that you can use also in the telesale, the, the process. All right, so notice I, I added the integrity logo in here. <laughs> I, I had to be comprehensive. And then, you know, the integrity at the bottom, just because, you know, we are part of integrity marketing group. So I thought, you know, it's a nice subtle touch. So this is where we tell the client, this is all the bond report starts, right, with this slide, okay? Then, um, we go to the next slide and we tell them about me. So this is where we share about who I am, right? I tell them about, you know, growing up all over the country with my dad in the Navy. Um, I was stationed in the Air Force. That's how I got to Dayton. Um, met my wife doing theater. We have five wonderful kids, three girls and two boys. By the way, tell me about how you guys ended up in Dayton. Did you guys grow up out around here? So the, all this, about me is to find out about them. It just gives you a launching point to relate to them and find out about them and their kids and finding about what their kids are into. 
you know, prior to protecting families, I was in the Air Force and a defense contractor, served my country in the Air Force. And this is where you get, oh yeah, really, I was in service too. Oh, what service were you in? So we get into, you know, finding out about that. Or they'll say, my son's in the Air Force. Oh, really? Well, that's cool. What's he do? Right? When I'm not protecting families, I enjoy playing my guitar in my praise and worship band, which I do. This is my passion. It's probably more of a passion doing that than taking care of families. Well, okay, maybe they're good. Maybe they're equal. <laughs> but, you know, I want them to know who I am. There he goes, my touch-sensitive, fancy mouse. When I'm not protecting families, I enjoy playing my guitar. And then I tell them a story. So this is where you tell them a story about a personal story about you and insurance. You know, I tell them about passing my grandmother. She had a lot of life insurance that really helped my family out. And I'm just passionate to make sure other people are covered. If you've got a personal story, like if you had a spouse that passed away and they had no life insurance, talk about how, how difficult that was for you. Okay, and this is where you ask them, have you ever had a loved one that died without any um, final expense insurance and you had to cover the funeral. Have you ever had a situation like that? You know, or did it, you know of anyone that lost their home because the, the breadwinner, one of the breadwinners or both passed away, were they able to stay in the home? You know, try to relate it to them. This is where you get a lot of good bond report stuff going on, man. And then, and then I show them pictures. Pictures sell, man. Pictures, because people love to see who you are. And this is like part of my, um, business card, my uh, my digital business card. They see a picture of my family, okay? And I've actually texted out a couple of them today and um, already because I'm running a couple of appointments tomorrow. Actually, I got three or four tomorrow. So, hey, you might see me on the leaderboard. We'll see. <laughs> got a lot of rust to shake off, man. So um, I'm, I feel just like you if you're brand new. <laughs> You know, you're thinking, I'm, you're teaching me how to sell? <laughs> Trust me, I was like the number four producer in the Alliance years ago. So, like, don't be talking about me, man. Anyway, so pictures, my lovely wife, Ginny, my lovely children, you know, my life insurance license. They see I'm duly deputized to protect them, okay? <laughs> right? And they just, people love pictures, man. People love pictures. It's it humanizes you. You don't become, you're no longer the, the slimy sales guy that they think salespeople are. You become a human being, a parent, someone that has different roles other than trying to protect people. Okay. But you tell them, you tell them that you care about them because you want to, you want to care about them because that's your job. So you tell them, okay, now look, we represent, so this is where you start getting rid of objections using the standard sales process. It's still part of bond rapport because we're gonna to get to the carrier slide next. Okay, but you're getting rid of objections here. So this is still bond rapport. This is creating credibility. Now you create a trust, you want them to believe you. We want them to believe about our credibility to protect them. So Joe and Mary, we represent only A-rated carriers. And what that means is they pay their claims. They're financially sound, and some have been in business over 100 years, like a really long time. And the, the great thing for you, why is this good for you? Because people always are motivated, okay, people are always motivated by self-interest, right? So we're gonna tell them why this is good for them. This is good for you because what we do is we shop for the best possible deal to save you money. Now look, it might be a great quality company, you know, it could be the Mercedes Benz, right? But if you can't afford their rates, what good does that do for you? So we're going to find the best companies, but with the best rates. So we'll save you money, get you the coverage you're needing that's affordable, they'll fit your budget. Okay, does that make sense to you? Boom. You nailed down the shop around excuse. Because they're going to say, well, we want to shop around. Oh, well, you've got all these companies. Let me show you the companies. So we're going to cover the companies. So here are the companies I represent. Do you recognize any of the logos? You've heard of Mutual of Omaha or Transamerica, AIG. These are some of the best companies. And, you know, I'm sure with all these companies, we're going to find you something that will meet your needs and fit your budget. Boom. Credibility, trust, and believe. You've got credibility. Now we move on to the upfront contract. You've got a good feeling, the good juju that they 
really are cool with you, right? Now this is the upfront contract. So Joe, Mary, let me tell you what we're gonna accomplish today. What we do is absolutely unique. We're not like a lot of other companies out there that try to fit you, shoehorn you into one product because that's where they get the most commission from. They're the one size fit all approach. What we do is we custom tailor the program to you, your needs and your budget, your health situation, et cetera. So I'm gonna do the shopping for you from our 16 carrier partners. Now, look, in order to find the best program for you and your family, I'm gonna to have to ask you some questions about your particular situation, okay? And then I'm gonna ask you some basic health questions to get a really good snapshot, a good picture of your situation so then I can come up with the, the perfect product for you so I can tailor it for your needs. Does that sound reasonable? Bam, upfront contract, boom, okay? I'm gonna find you the best program, okay? You may throw in there, now look, if I can't find you the best program and you don't feel comfortable, then we'll end it. You, you can end it and you know, we part as friends. Okay, you can add that part, that's an upfront contract technique to again give them further feeling of control that they can end it any time. That's what's crazy about this, is they, when they know they can end it at any time, they wanna move forward. Right, they wanna move forward because they don't feel so defensive because they know, well, I'm in control. See how that works, it's a beautiful thing. Garrido does a great job in this book talking about giving people and empowering them with that, okay? So boom, they say, well, yeah, it sounds reasonable. Boom, you close the compartment on the upfront contract. Now you're allowed to go to pain finding, okay, whoops. So pain finding, I have it broken out into two types of sales. This is the final expense slide, right? And then the next one is the mortgage protection or the term. I call it term or the life. If they're just looking for regular life insurance, it's not really final expense oriented, then. So this is the most important slide in the bunch, in my humble but accurate opinion, pain finding. So Joe and Mary, let me ask you a question. What were you thinking about when you contacted us through this form or through the face, through the online form? I don't call it Facebook, I call it the online form or when you talk to a you know, telemarketer or however they contacted us. This is where you get to say exactly how they did it, okay? Take me back, so this is a good technique. Take me back to when you filled this out. What was on your mind? So that's another way to say that. Take me back to when you first filled this out. Who are the loved ones you're trying to protect? And this is so important. Well, I just, my wife and children, I wanna make sure that they're gonna be okay. Oh. Okay, and your wife's name's Mary, right? So tell me your children's names. Um, well, um, Sammy, Martha, and Bridget. Oh, those are cool names, Sammy, Martha, and Bridget. How old are they? Uh, Sammy's 12, Martha's six, and Bridget's two. Wow, <laughs> that's a nice spread there. Oh yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, I've got five. So I've been where you're at, you got five? Man, I can't believe with how much busy, how busy we are with three. Trust me, if you decide to have two, three, 12 more kids after three, you're about the busiest you are right now. Trust me. <laughs> oh, we're not gonna let that happen to us. Or he'll say, oh, I got that fixed. <laughs> I mean, seriously, when you start bantering with a client like that, oh my gosh, bon rapport, you got bon rapport, okay? The, so final expense. Now, were you wanting to be buried or cremated, okay? Let me ask you, have you, had, had anyone, have you ever had anyone close to you that had to go through a barrier or cremation? You know, doing, you know how much that costs to do that? Let me ask you, if something happened to you last Tuesday, who would be making the arrangements today? Would it be Mary? Would it be your kids? Okay, these, I mean, you can kind of season as required. Use whatever questions get you down what we call the pain funnel to move them from logical to emotional, right? Well, if you don't take this program, what would your family do? How are they gonna bury you? Are they gonna to have to do a GoFundMe page? Like, I'm telling you what, man, you are like amping it up, right? And you wait to, for them to answer the question, right? You wait for them to answer the question. You're not barraging them, you're just doing it. And plus you're doing it with a nurturing, the nurturing parent voice, the very calm and, and nurturing voice, I call it the DJ voice, 
Right. So take me back, Joe, when you filled this form out, what was on your mind? You see how that, you know, you're not like, see, because when you're like bold and talking, like kind of like how I'm talking now, that, that dominates, your vocal quality dominates. You don't want dominate voice. You want slow DJ voice. You want to sound laid back and, and you're giving them the power to be in control. When you start using the, the bold voice, then you start acting authoritarian. You know, you don't want to do that, man. You want to be low and slow DJ voice. Get this where the pain is emotional. Do you know anyone that had to do a GoFundMe page? Had anyone in your family have to raise money for a barrel? Oh man, you'll hear the stories. You want them to start telling you stories. Oh my gosh, my aunt died. And like, we all had to come up with money. And when I got the email, it's like, golly, man, why did she take care of this with her life, with life insurance? Oh man, it sounds like life insurance is important to you. Oh man, you, absolutely. I don't want anyone to have to do that for me. I'm going to take care of my family, man. I mean, that's where you want to get them, where they're like, you know, okay? That's when you've really done it good. All right. Okay, so this is the pain-finding questions for life insurance. Read mortgage protection. Or if they're looking, you know, you're on another, you know, uh, someone who just wants life insurance, you start going through. So take me back when you filled this form out or when you filled this out online. What were you thinking about? Who are the loved ones you're trying to protect? When your family loses your income, when you die, what will happen to them? So this is where you start drilling down, man. Morse protection is a lot of fun to do this. I mean, not a lot of fun, but, well, I mean, I kind of covered it before. The pain-finding questions that make them feel like, oh, my gosh, I got to take care of this. And, and you end it with, well, Joe, how does that make you feel that Mary is going to have to go through all that stuff? Oh, man, I, I don't want him to do that. See, again, getting him into child mode getting them into emotional mode rocks. So you get the pain where it's just really, you got that good emotion and that good juju going on with the trust and you really establish they really need it. So now you move on to the budget, okay? So actually, this isn't the budget step. This continues the pain finding because you need to know their situation. Because remember, you told me you're going to ask them questions. So you got the pain. Now you got to figure out what, they can afford and what their situation is. You know what to, you know what to cover with them. So this is sort of the financial green sheet. Again, this is under the category of asking them questions. I'm going to have to ask you, you know, question about your situation. So this is part of the situation. So the first one is the emotional situation. Now let's talk about the financial situation. Do you have insurance at work that your company controls? You get this out on the open, man. This is one of those. Um, excuses that you like blow up, man. You set a mind and blow it up up front. You handle the excuse up front. Well, I have insurance at work. Let's, you know, call out the elephant in the room and call it out from Jump Street, man. So, Joe Mary, do you have insurance at work that your company controls? Now, if you're dealing with a retired person, you can bypass this one, okay? You're just finding out other situations, their financial situation that can help them with this need because you want to know what you want to get it all out on the table, in other words. And this is that financial green sheet that we talk about. So do you have any insurance of work that your company controls? Now, what do I say company controls? Because I want to nip that in the bud, man. Well, yeah, they cover five, five years of my um, salary. Oh, well, that's awesome, man. Most of our clients have work insurance. Now, notice what I just said. Most of our clients have work insurance. So what did I imply in that statement? Number one, I have clients that have work insurance. So other people that are in your same situation that have work insurance also get a program like this that they control. That's why the subtle mind things I plant gives you an opportunity to thwart this objection. Do you have insurance at work that your company con controls? <laughs> well, yeah, we've got five times or seven. Oh man, great, most of our... Most of our clients have work insurance and work insurance is great because they subsidize a big chunk of the premiums. And I think everyone should have work insurance. Um, but you know that if you get laid off, you get sick and can't, can no longer work at your company, you know, the company controls it. So that goes away, right? So let me ask you a more relevant question. 
Do you have any life insurance that you control to help your family? So you notice what I did? I just totally dismissed, I've taken the work insurance excuse away. Do you see how that works? You, tell, you call it for what it is, and then what you've done mentally is you've reframed their thought process by pulling it out of the frame of reference of what they're trying to accomplish, and you're removing it, okay? That's how you get rid of that company insurance excuse. So do you have any insurance that you control? And then they lay it all out. Oh, do you have those policies here so we can review those? You want to get those policies if you can. If you can't, it's not a deal breaker. Don't let it stop you from protecting them. But if you can find out what it is, then that's the right thing to do. Now, do you have any liquid assets that you could, that could use to offset this need? Um, anything like any retirements, IRAs, 401ks, brokerage accounts, mutual funds, anything like that. What are you looking for here? Again, you're planting seeds, man, for the future sales. And by finding this out by, in the context of what other things that they could use to offset this, you find out if they have retirement, pensions, IRAs, 403Bs, 401Ks, any brokerage accounts, things that could potentially be an annuity opportunity for you, okay? But again, it rounds up. This is a green sheet, okay? The green sheet is a sheet that we fill out, and this helps you fill that out in a very laid back way without feeling like you're getting into their stuff, right? And you're using it under guise of helping with the insurance need, okay? Now, do you own or rent this home, okay? Now, do you have any debt that might be, that uh, they may be responsible for when you die, like credit cards, car loans, anything like that? Again, you're planting the seed for the debt elimination product. So all these are seed planting things that you can annotate I've got other ones in here, baby, <laughs> that will lay seeds down that can grow into another opportunity to serve your client. That's why I crafted this because none of this is in the other one, okay? But they're here now, so you can go back like a Megan Wood, all right? Okay. Pre-qualification questions. Again, this will help you know where to go. So let me, again, under the guise of asking them questions about their situation. So now, are you a U.S. citizen or a permanent resident? Why do I ask a permanent resident, tax ID person? Because CFG will cover people that are permanent residents. A lot of our carriers will not, but we still can take care of them, all right? So that's why we ask a permanent resident question. Do you have access to an iPhone, smartphone, or computer? Okay, because we're going to be sending you some signature documents for the electronic application. Okay, again, I'm thinking telesales, but even you're with the client, you want to make sure they can access that so they can sign it right there and then when you're with them so that you can move on with the application, which are the, all the iGo, iPipeline applications required to do a HIPAA signature first before you can move on in the application. So you want to know what their situation is. If they don't have a computer, don't have, they got a flip phone, then you know that your choices now with the particular products are limited. Okay, like to the voice signature products, okay? Um, now, will you be paying for this or will your benef beneficiary or third party be paying for this? Why is this important? Because Forrester's PlanRight eApp won't allow you to have a third party paying for it. The insured, the payer, and the owner have to be the same person. So immediately, you know, I can't do Forrester's eApp for final expense, okay? So now CFG, right? Now, do you have a checking or savings account or do you only use Social Security Direct Express MasterCard? Why do you ask that question? Because if they only have the Social Security Direct Express MasterCard, which is kind of a lot of words, you can only use Transamerica, Great Western, or AIG. Transamerica corners the market on the Social Security Direct Express MasterCard because they own the bank that offers that through the Social Security Administration. So you got to learn Transamerica because sometimes you're in a situation where you have to do it. Now, if they're really sick and they got to go guaranteed issue, then, you know, it's Great Western or AIG, okay? Like right now, I don't know if that will change, um, but as of this webinar, which is the 30th of July, 2020, now, the health prequalification. Now, what is your height and weight? 
you're establishing, reestablishing it if you have the lead. Now, you, since you're five foot nine, one seventy five, is that correct? Do you use any nicotine products, vaping, or anything? Do you have anything major like heart attack, stroke, mini, mini stroke, cancer, hepatitis? Um, actually, I should put diabetes in here too. I should put diabetes, heart attack, stroke. I'll do that now. See, this is why you can use the download link. Stroke, I should put mini stroke. Anyway, I'll fix it, but <laughs> I just have to do, I'm so anal. Okay, and then here's the seed planting question. Do you have any family history of these health issues? Why do you ask this? Because you can come back with the hospital indemnity, you can come back with a cancer policy, a heart attack policy, stroke policy, you know, as long as they don't have those issues. But I think if, if they have a family history of it, what's cool about that question is these are the number one or the top four killers of people after age 44, heart attack, stroke, cancer, right? The top three. And diabetes, it creates all kinds of other problems. <laughs> Plant the seed for the next sale, which is you know, the critical illness or cancer or heart attack stroke policies from our carriers and hospital indemnity, well, the hospital indemnity ones later, okay, it's in two questions, but what medications have you been prescribed for in the past 10 years? And this is where you kind of get an idea of what you're gonna be able to do for them, right, when it comes to medications, because medications leads to ailments. So you always ask, why are they taking that medication? So you get a good feel for what ailments you're dealing with, and then that leads you using the underwriting guides on what product to use. Any overnight stays in the hospital or surgeries for either of you? How long did you stay in the hospital? This plants the seed for the hospital indemnity. Another good one is, have you guys got the COVID? Have you been exposed or did you already get it? Okay, that puts a little bit of, oh my gosh, you know, a little bit of a trepidation about getting it. Any overnight stay, so that plants a seed for the hospital indemnity. See how kind of everything now is embedded in a simple ATM presentation so that you can go back for these other products once you take care of your client. It's pretty cool, huh? Now we get to the budget. So all that was pain leading up to the budget step. And Joe, I just wanna make sure that you understand that we realize this program has, you choose has to do three things. Number one, I mean, it has to fit in your budget, and that's important, isn't it? Yes. It also has to solve the problem, because if it doesn't solve the problem, there is no point to this, right? Yeah, that's right. So look, if it's not in the budget and there's no point to it, then you're not comfortable with it. And if you're not comfortable with it, then we need to figure out what you're not comfortable with before moving forward, okay? Does that make sense? Boom, what you've done is you reestablish that they're still in control. And when they feel in control, it's, they'll feel empowered to move forward through the rest of the process. Again, it's establishing we're gonna fit in their budget and that they can stop this process anytime they want to. So again, establishing budget. And then if you did the other, you know, bond report on contract and paint properly, you could ask, so give me an idea, Joe, what budget were you thinking? What range were you wanting to be with this? I know there's kind of where you want to be, but you know, what is maybe what you want and what is realistic in your situation? Because you know, you had some major health situations, and you got some serious medications. You know, this may not be as inexpensive as, as you'd like because of your health issues. Again, give them a dose of reality. What salesperson would tell them reality? So what kind of range were you thinking of? Okay, now again, Depends on how good you are, how good you were at doing the first three th steps of the compartment, or first four or three to get the budget done. All right, then you go to the decision. This is where you nail, get rid of the think about it. So let me tell you what happens next. After they said, yeah, that sounds reasonable. You give them control. Now you tell them, okay, this is what's gonna happen next. <laughs> You've just taken control, all right? I'm gonna show you three premium options. and based on all the questions you've asked, I've asked, I'm gonna show you three premium options. You get to choose the best one that fits your needs and budget. And once you pick that program, we're gonna fill out an application 
or an electronic application and we're gonna submit it to the insurance company. So at that point, they're gonna think about you to determine if you qualify. Now, we will know if they approve you within about seven days. So really, there's nothing to think about tonight until we know that you're approved. Does that sound good? Okay, great. Now look, once you receive your policy in the mail, which if they approve you, you're gonna get in the mail within 10 days. I'm gonna call you or I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna go over it with you to make sure it's got everything that you wanted. So it's at this point when you receive your policy that you get to think about it, that you have something to think about where you could increase the coverage, decrease it, whatever you wanna do at that point, that's when we do it. How's that all sound to you? Bam, decision, process laid out, they've agreed to it. Now let's go on to fulfillment, man. Let's fulfill the promise that we gave them that we're gonna give them three options that they can afford, then they're gonna pick one and that we're gonna apply for it. That's the decision. So before we do that, now let, let me explain first how this final, program, this final expense program works. So what you've done is you've gotten, you get rid of all the things that all the other agents have talked about that they don't like. The coverage permanent, it's good until the day you die, right? They don't want this to lapse. They want this to go the rest of their life. So as long as you keep making your premium payment, boom, your family's gonna have this. Now your rate never increases and your benefits never decrease. Okay, again, you're getting rid of excuse, uh, objections here, man. Have you, ever heard, have you ever heard of those TV ads on radio or, uh, or on radio that say you can get 100,000 of life insurance for just $10 a month? <laughs> have you ever heard those? Yeah, it's funny how they advertise those. What they don't tell you in the small print or they do it in that, you know, two second rattle that you can't hardly understand. They don't tell you that it's accident insurance. Like it only pays if you die in an accident. Now we have those accidental programs too. And maybe you want, might want to add that in, but it won't pay if you die of a heart attack, stroke, cancer, or whatever, of a, nat, you know, of a sickness or illness. And, I'm, and that's not what you want here, right? Boom. Again, you pose a question that they got to answer. That's not what you were looking for, right? Boom. I love a asking a question like that's a negative reverse again. <laughs> that's a Sandler negative reverse question. And it has cash accumulate, and this program has a cash accumulating account that can temporarily cover any missed payments that you might have in the future. So Joe, gross cash value. If you miss a payment, they'll just take it out of the cash value, easy peasy. Okay, so do you understand how this program is gonna work for you? Yes, great. Okay, so this final expense, this is the mortgage protection. If you run into a mortgage protection lead, then you cover what the mortgage protection program does. It'll help pay off the mortgage. We don't say it'll pay off the mortgage because some programs they can't afford where it pays off the mortgage, but we wanna make sure it helps pay off the mortgage when you die. You get to choose the beneficiary, it doesn't go to the bank. It's portable, so should you refinance or move out of your house, it follows you, not your mortgage. So you're in total control. The coverage stays the same, the payment stays the same, doesn't increase. Now there are different ways to handle this, Joe. We can, to make it affordable for you, we can cover half the balance of the mortgage or we can have the full thing and the other half of the accidental death just to give you something affordable. Remember, we're committed to fit the, fitting this in your budget. So this is what we're gonna do, some of the ways that we're gonna handle it. We also have this really cool option called mortgage payment protection. Okay, and this tends to be better for our senior clients where if you've got the full thing covered, it'll cost you a thousand bucks a month. And I'm sure, man, you don't wanna have a heart attack right now if I showed you that kind of rate. So in order to preserve your life, <laughs> I can maybe cover six, 12 months or 24 months of your mortgage payments with a policy that'll stay in force for the rest of your life so that it'll provide time for your um, kids or for your spouse so they can continue making the mortgage payments, earn more equity in their home. They don't gotta short sell your house. They're gonna get max equity. So we kind of call this mortgage payment protection, but really what it is is an equity preservation um, uh, option. Does that make sense? And a lot of times, a lot of our seniors like this one because it's much more affordable. Does that make sense? Boom, question, right? You told them stuff, but then you lock it down with a question. Now, if there's disability involved here, like if they're young enough to get the disability, I might talk about that. I might talk about the return of premium if they're young enough, if it makes sense. I, 
I will choose not to even talk about these if I don't think it's in play, okay? So I'll just kind of skip over that, or I might talk about it. Now we get to the quote. So once, you know, um, so let me calculate, so bear with me, <laughs> Megan quote, Megan Wood quote, bear with me while I calculate, you know, three different options for you, okay? And this is like, if you're in a telesale situation, bear with me, give me a few minutes, I'm gonna come back. In the meantime, why don't you go grab a piece of paper and a pen so that you can write down the options I'm gonna lay out for you, okay? Now, with you with the client, you know how to do that, right? So then you, you get your three options, you lay the three options out, boom, you nail down the options, they pick one that they like, right? And then you're off to the races, ready to do the electronic application, okay? So when you're ready to do the electronic application, you set them up to what you need. Okay, so great. Now we're gonna make sure that you qualify for this by putting together an application, electronic application to send to the carrier. So these are the things I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need your social security number, your driver's license number, um, your doctor's name and address and phone number, your banking information um, to include your account number and your routing number. Or if you, you, know, if you don't have that, your social security express debit card if you have that. And then we're gonna definitely need um, your beneficiary names. I think you said Mary. And then would your contingent beneficiary be your children, Sammy, Martha, and Bridget? Okay, this is the value of knowing the names because you can spell the names out instead of using a cold substitute for names like beneficiary, contingent beneficiary. Well, gee, that's warm. <laughs> that's warm and loving. <laughs> and then finally, we need to answer the health questions accurately. In other words, I'm going to ask you health questions, and it's so important that you answer it as accurate as possible because if you don't answer it accurately, you know that all your health stuff's on the internet anyway in a thing called a medical insurance board. What that is is a repository of all your health issues and your, your prescription medications. And so when we fill this out, it's important to be accurate because if we leave something off there that you forgot, then they're going to think you're trying to hide something and then they're not going to want to issue it. Okay, now we don't want that to happen, do we? Again, you lock it down with a question. And what did you just do? You told them, don't lie to me. I know you've lied to the last three agents and you think I'm gonna be your fourth agent that you're gonna to lie to, to to suddenly figure out that I found a carrier that'll cover you. Okay, you're, that's in your head, right? You're not saying that. But what you're saying by what I just, you know, how you pose that is be accurate. Tell the truth so that we can get you covered. Okay, and this is where you're not gonna get surprised by someone who tries to lie to you. Trust me, you have just a few people that lie to you where you get it declined it's gonna drive you nuts, right? Okay, I'm checking my text. Okay, then you're filling out the application. Now after the application, the signatures are done. Okay, let me tell you what happens from this point on, Joe. Congratulations, you are covered right now. So God forbid something happens to you next hour, tomorrow, the next day, your family's taken care of. So we're gonna, now I mean, you can only say this gang, if in fact they fulfilled all the requirements to get the temporary coverage or contingent coverage, whichever the case may be, excuse me. So congratulations, you're not covered during this underwriting period. Now this may take a few days to get, maybe seven days to approve you. But here's the thing, when they receive your application, now this is, depends on how you set up with the client, I recommend this, that you have it draft immediately, okay? So this is where you let the client know, look, when they receive this, they're gonna draft your account right away, okay? Um, so that we know that it's done, okay? So that, you know, $125.37, you see that debited out of your account, it's because that's what happened. So you're letting them know what's gonna happen, okay? That's, but it's refundable, so if they should, decline you, which we hope they don't, but should they decline you, they're gonna refund that money. But at least it puts the coverage in place right now, okay? So you're warning them what's gonna happen, right? They're not gonna get surprised and get mad at you, okay? Now, if they, for some reason, you had to put it out in the future, then you tell them, now they're gonna draft your account on August 15th, the way that you wanted, 
okay, so I just want you to prepare you. Should they approve you, then that's when they'll cover. Now, here's the thing with that. Once they approve you, then the, the conditional coverage ends, and that period of time be between when you're approved, which could be this week, to when you make your first payment, should something happen within that time, you're not covered and they're not obligated to pay the policy. So that was the only thing when you wanted it out in the future, that's the only thing. Now understand that's how you wanted it, but I just want you to know so there are no surprises. That makes sense? This is where you, you know, in the spirit of full disclosure, right? Do you tell them what's gonna happen? They may say, well, if that's the case, well, why don't you go ahead and set it up where they draft it right away? And then we can change, Joe, that's a great idea. That's a great decision because we can, once it's drafted, you can change the future draft date whenever you want. So you're totally in control. And then boom, you can open up the app, okay? You can open the, up the e-app, change it, close the e-app, and then get the signatures done again. So you can always go back and open it up and, you know. Now, it's good to address this up front with them. The other thing too, just, not be, you don't do it because of this, but if they draft in the future, you're not going to get a commission until they make their first draft. So if it's on August 15th, which is what, two weeks from now, and I think the most you can do is 30 days, when they draft it is when you get paid. Okay, that's when they pay your commissions. Not that you do that. If the client feels comfortable that that's what they want to do, then do it. I'm just telling you that that period of time, they're uncovered. So that's really more the reason why you want to let them know they're taking a risk, okay? Um, you already told them the carrier will take about seven days to approve you. If they should approve you, they're gonna mail you the policy within 10, 10 days, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna go over the policy with you to make sure it's got everything that you're looking for, okay? At that point, you can raise it, lower the coverage, whatever you wanna do to make changes to it. You don't tell them that they can decline coverage. You just tell them what they could do as far as keeping it, okay? Don't tell them, or you can cancel it. Don't put that seed in their head, man. <laughs> now, this is, again, managing their expectation. Now, if they should decline coverage, no worries. Okay, this is parent voice. No worries. I'm going to come back. I'm going to find another carrier that will take care of you. See how that, that sounds all warm and fuzzy, right? <laughs> you're in parent mode, man. You're in nurturing mode. So you're making them feel good that you're going to take care of them no matter what, even if they should get declined. So decline is not a bad word. It just means we're going to find something else that's going to cover you. Then you go into the post sales. So this is all post sales stuff, by the way. I forgot, you know, once they pick and you got the pick the premium and then they, you get the policy application done, this is all post sales stuff, man. So this is, again, will increase your place in persistency. Now, Joe and Mary, you feel good about taking care of your family today for 120 seven dollars and 13 cents per month and you shut up and let them answer the question because you want to know if there's a hesitation if there's any sense of trepidation making that budget and you might say something like you know look um it's vacation month you're gonna have vacation if you go on vacation they're gonna be vacation expenses or you want to are you gonna look at this draft coming out of your account are you gonna call me to want to cancel or it's christmas time and all your Christmas bills come in in January and you look at all the bills and you kind of throw your hands up and go, oh my gosh, I can't afford my life insurance payment and you're gonna wanna call me to cancel. Is that a possibility here? And then I shut up. How the answer to the question will determine what I do. If there's hesitation and you feel, look, you're gonna, you're gonna feel it too, that it's a stretch. I'm gonna jump in and say, you know, I get the feeling like this is a stretch. Is it a stretch for you? And this is why I put them in a position to sell me that they can afford it. They're gonna to have to sell me that this is a righteous sale. So this is where they gotta sell me that I feel comfortable with it. If I still don't believe they feel comfortable with, the, that they're comfortable with it, I'm gonna go, you know what, option two, you know what I showed you, the option two for $85.26 a month? I think that might be better for you. Does that make sense? So. If we, we can go back, open up the application and change it to that, does that feel better for you? And you will like hear it in their voice, oh, yeah, that's gonna be so much better. Then you did the right thing. Or they're gonna say, well, you know what, Mary, we can do this, right? I mean, yeah, we can do this. Okay, you sure? 
Like I can change it. Yeah, we can do it. Okay, well, now when you get it back, remember you're gonna get it in within seven, you, you know, 10 days after they approve you. You know, know that we can drop it then, okay? Drop the premium then, then if you figure out you can't. What you're trying to do is give them the feeling like it's okay to change their mind, okay? That it's, you know, they don't gotta cancel because you've judged them as being, you know, they, that they can't handle their finances. You're making them feel warm and fuzzy that they can, they can change it to a lower premium, okay? So this is where you're locking down the post sale, man. And then if you're still in the home, you go through with the emergency response system, okay? If you're doing telesale, this is where you book the second appointment to go over the referral system. So we talk about the emergency response system. We tell them there were $1 billion, actually it's $7 billion of unclaimed life insurance money in America. I actually have an article on this, which um, I can send you guys. So you can talk, like if you're with them, you could show it to them, right? Do you know why that is? Well, because most people don't know, the insurance companies don't know that they died. They just see the policy lapse, but their beneficiaries didn't know they had a policy. <laughs> so they never put in for the claim. I mean, would you want that to happen to you, Joe, where your beneficiaries and no one knows you have this policy and then they never put a claim in? Would that be terrible? Well, yeah. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen in the next six months to a year, but like if you keep this policy another 20 years, 20 years from now, you might, need, you, might even have, you might not even have the policy and the people that know you had it, they might be gone. So I'm not talking so much next six to 12 months, but I'm talking 20 years from now. So basically what we do is we create this emergency contact list for you so that anyone who knows you within your circle of friends and family and acquaintances, that they'll notify us of your demise, of you dying, so we can get the claims process started. A lot of times your people's closest to you, they're gonna be so involved in it, they're not gonna be thinking straight. So sometimes people that you know that are acquaintances from church or whatever, it's important to have them on your emergency contact list. And you know, out of 10 people, only one will notify us. Again, we're talking 20 years from now, 30 years from now, 15 years from now. One out of 10 is our numbers. And we've had this work, but one out of 10. So it's safe to get 20 names and numbers, okay? So that we can get, make sure that this gets paid out. So now we pull out our form and we ask the client, hey, Joe, can you grab your phone and get to your address book? And what we need is, at least 10 names, but the best is 20 names of people that would know that you passed away and that would have some presence of mind to give me a call. So I'm gonna need their names, their phone numbers, and how you know them. And then what I'm gonna simply do is contact them, let them know that I'm your insurance agent and that they should call me if there's anything that should happen to you if you should become ill, close to death, or have passed away, then we can get the death benefit claim started. Okay, so who would be the first one on your list? It can be your pastor, people at church, doesn't necessarily have to be your close family and friends, uh, but they're likely to be the ones that would notify me. And if they're local, even better, okay, so that um, I'd be able to contact them directly. All right, so who's your first person? And then you just say next, 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 and you just wait until they tell you more names. And you just fill this form out, all right? And then the next step is to tell the client we're gonna contact these people, all right? What, that that's gonna happen. You're gonna get sent these, this list, and then what would be really cool is if you notified them that I'll be calling to make sure they know the responsibilities I'm gonna give them my contact information so they can call me should something happen to you, all right? Now, the best way to do it is for you to text them, okay? Now, look, if you can't text them, it's too many people, I'll text them for you, okay? And I'm just gonna text them that, uh, introducing myself, I'm gonna send them my business card, my virtual business card, and then I'm gonna include you in the text. So I'm gonna send it like it was you, but I'm gonna text you and the client and your friend so they know that it's really coming from you. Is that okay to do that for you? And I can take care of all this. Does that make sense, Joe? So you're gonna receive a message from my phone, but it's gonna to go to your, your 
contact person and yourself and I'm going to use your voice in it as it's like it's coming from you. Is that cool? Great. Thanks. Unless you want to do it. If you want to go through 20 names, then you can do it. Let me know which way you want to go. Boom. You nailed down the ERS. All right. Now we talk about the prescription discount card. We can get them savings on their prescription discount. By the way, um, you're able to sponsor four other people. You got four friends of yours that you know take a lot of medications that could benefit from this card. Another way to get referrals. Um, we got more detail on this as well. Safe money, this is where you find annuities. We got all kinds of training on finding safe money and then setting up a call with Burlington Alliance Capital Management. So they'll call your client based on the green sheet to see if we can help them with an annuity. We throw this chart in there to show them the power of fixed index annuities. Final questions, it's a recruiting slide. Hey, by the way, do you know anyone that might be able to help us out? We're hiring right now. Do you know anyone that can, you know, on a part-time basis, that can use another 500 bucks a week doing for people what I've done for you? And they're gonna say, well, how about my son who's in my basement eating Cheetos after he graduated from college last year who doesn't have a job? And we can get them covered, man, right? And then, by the way, I don't know if you know that this exists, but we've got this cool health matching account. And then this, we talk about the health matching account. And oh, by the way, you have it for pets too. <laughs> we got a pet HMA that you can put away money that gets matched into a debit account where you can grow this matching funds where you have double what you put in there that you can spend on your pet or on yourself. They're two separate cards, okay? So you can do it for your pet or you can do it for your family. I have one for my family and it's this rocks. This is how it works. You can show them the chart on how much they put in and then how much they earn over 35 months. Boom, you're done. And remember that second part from the ERS on you can do on the second appointment with the client on a telesale. But that's, you know, that is our thing, dude. Dude, that's, um, and this is really how you do it on a telesale too. You're really taking through the same process. There's no difference, right? You go from bond report all the way to post sale on the phone. Makes sense? Anyone got any questions? <laughs> all right, man. Well, that is it. That was on my agenda. I hope I covered everything for you. Um, you've got the links to download this and um, rock on, man. God bless everybody. Let's get on leaderboard. Let's do this thing. I gave you the formula <laughs> and the new version 7.0. Rock on, man. God bless everybody. Thanks.